Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative and check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to subscribe and download. Daily Beans, Alison Gill, welcome to the show. Hello, how are you guys? Great to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Eric Garland, how are you tonight? Uh, always an adventure. Always, always <laughs> is. It always is. Uh, and Lincoln's Bible, how are you? I'm here. I am here. Last week on the Friday show, we talked about how serious the uh, USPS uh, crisis was, how Louis DeJoy was really uh, ramping up uh, what could be a real challenge to the, the authenticity and the integrity of the elections on November over the weekend, I spent a lot of time just digging in and digging into what uh, Louis is all about. And I am blown away by this man's business history, um, the company he worked for, because it just seems like it's a, it's a massive confluence of criminality. The company is called XPO Logistics, and they deliver to 99.9% .9 of US zip codes and have a global network that includes many locations in China, Europe, and even Moscow. In other words, they ship a lot of Chinese goods to American doorsteps. Louis DeJoy has been the Postmaster General of the United States since May. He was the former chief executive of one of the subsidiaries at XPO Logistics. Last week, it was revealed that DeJoy ran a scheme inside the company in order to build up his Republican fundraising credentials. He told his employers that if they donated money to the Republican Party or to a GOP candidate, he would reimburse them when they got their bonuses simply giving them bigger bonuses. It's a scheme that appears to be criminal. It's called straw donations, right? You're, you're taking donations uh, from, from people, reimbursing them using your company funds. That is a federal crime. Uh, but I mean, the federal statute of limitations might be up on this, but there is no statute of limitations in North Carolina on this. And the North Carolina Attorney General could and should bring charges. And it's investigating, and it will likely bring charges. What does that mean for Louis to join now? Can he still function in that role while under investigation? Or is there a way to, to maneuver him out uh, because he's under investigation? Well, I think there was a story that just dropped that a member of Congress has asked for his suspension. Uh, do you guys have any follow up on that? I, I think Garland, mm -hmm. Garland does, yeah. Garland. Yeah, uh, Rep. Uh, Rep. Maloney uh, has has asked that he be suspended uh, while his uh, election crimes are under investigation, as well as uh, she insinuated that he's committed 18 U.S. Code 1001 false statements to uh, federal agents. Uh, and and I would think that if uh, Richard Burr had to step down just as the chairman of the Senate Intel Committee for being investigated for potential. Um, you know, wonky stock sales after his uh, classified briefing on COVID, but right before the market crash. If that had to happen, I don't understand, or, uh, you know, I, I would be at a loss if, if this also didn't happen, just to have it be stepped down and removed. And how does that, do? I don't know if you know how that suspension would work. Is it something that would just uh, be voted on by Congress? It could be something that would have to be uh, an act of the executive branch, presumably. Mm. Uh, I think tr Trump would have to do it, wouldn't he? Yeah. It, it seems like since it was Mnuchin who picked him and hired him, I mean, there's a board, so uh, it's a little vague of, of who actually will ask him to step down if Donald's determined to protect him. I, I don't know if there can, you know, he can, he can be indicted, though. I mean, they can just, he can just be charged with some crimes. Stay. Can still stay in office and still run the elections. That would be the fear. Uh, yeah. Um, his wife is also a particularly interesting character. She is going to be the new ambassador to Canada uh, if she's okay. confirmed. Um, she's nominated right now. Um, I, I don't know this about them, but they donated about seven hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars to Duke University just to get their son into the university. Well, oh, that's right. There's some varsity blues up in here too. Yeah. It's the gift yeah. that keeps on giving. Isn't Felicity in jail right now for that? Exactly, <laughs> I think she is. Yeah, I think she yeah, is. But maybe Lori's in there. And then this oh. incredible thing. Lori's you know, in for two months or whatever. 
Do you yeah, think she joined the Latin Kings or Armenian power? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Like, no, I, uh, oh, I can't even. I don't even want to speculate. I mean, I you know, if she's got. I yeah. mean, if she's got a Cardassian right. connection, let's assume the Ar Armenian power. I mean, it's a good California play. Well, there's a new there. gang, gonna Suburban be... Housewives. Uh, yeah. Karen. Man, the Karens are nasty. That's true. <laughs> she's, she's a Karen. I don't think. They will cut up. The... That's the tattoo. It will cut gonna... your hair. You will get the haircut with the, the, the reverse mullet. It's a great haircut. You get you get a tiny Starbucks uh, logo right here <laughs> for every Karen you kill in prison. That's, oh, oh, that's dark. Howard Schwartz. You don't know how close to home or Schultz, how close to home that is. Did you said I had Starbucks? This would be, uh, oh, please! Boss. All they do is talk well, to Howard. Um, so yeah. she, she has when she was ambassador to Estonia, uh, she was under George yeah. Bush. She uh, raised two hundred thousand dollars for Bush, which is a decent amount of money. Yeah. So for a campaign. At the same time, Louis DeJoy got $59 million in federal contracts for his company back then, uh, which was the predecessor to the XPO. It was called New Breed. Um, it's a lot of additional contracts because your wife might be donating something to, to a, a campaign. And I don't think this has really come up in, in the investigation so far, but I don't know if they can go that far back, but it would certainly be interesting to see if, uh, if that, uh, um, or at least that federal contracts that they got was in any way linked. Well, if you continue to crime, uh, you don't get to stop the clock on statute of limitations. I mean, if you remember when Manafort was charged, he had tax crimes going back far more than five years because it was all connected to his, you know, his criming spree that continued. And, you know, we had said, Trump, you better stop criming January 20, or January 1st, 2020, or if you don't win office again, you're going to be, even if you do, you're going to be within that five year statute of limitations. So if these can be connected, um, and I don't know, I don't know the inner machinations of that, but that we might not see uh, the, the clock start on the statute of limitations yeah. until he's, d he's done. Listen, well, no, it's within five years anyhow. So he's within, he's within range. So it's the latest crime that counts, not the first crime. If you if you can if it's arises from the same set of circumstances somehow I I those rules are tough for me to, to know. The restraint that I am exhibiting right now I'm trying to keep it very calm and clean. Um, it, this is a good bot. This guy this guy is. Let, let it go. Come on, come through. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Let's broad of the highest level, this company XPO is stacked with fraudsters and felons the guy that is the ceo and founder of it uh, and his he's got his little board going you got a ponzi schemer in there that was part of the mark spears cover-up for the mark spears for like 700 billion dollar ponzi scheme for a bunch of fucking mobsters yep. that's ah. who's in this you start pulling apart <laughs> this logistics mr logistics and, and, and this fucking guy and you Logistics. all you want are felons and criminals and this XBO, if you get into that company, look how it's set up. It it's literally in the model of like an Enron. This thing is gonna fall like a house of cards. It's really, really bad, everybody. It's this isn't even a, a little bit, oh, okay, maybe the guy came over from Bain Capital and done This isn't that. This is not that. These are gangsters. They're they're Wall Street gangsters. They're in this logis logistics company, and they're, they're, this got to joy, I believe, was brought in by Mnuchin in sort of the last act um, to cover for Donald in this long string of what uh, Republican operatives, backed by the Koch brothers, since the Koch, Charles Koch's agenda in 1976 of I'm, I've set my sights on destroying the U.S. Postal Service. Susan mm -hmm. Collins is in this. This is decades and decades and decades of them having the Postal Service in their sights as Republican operatives, bringing in the Goomba from the in the in the final hour of the Trump administration from the as a Repu this Republican straw donor extraordinaire who also happens to be a fraudster of the highest level, surrounded by felons who should all be in prison and have been convicted, some of them before for massive frauds. 
at the precipice of this company about to fall apart, stick this guy in at the head of the fucking postal service, right? And have him do things like dropping mailbags off the back of trucks as if that isn't as mobbed up as it gets. This is what's going on. Organized crime is still in there. It's still in there. It's got its hooks. And these fucking Republicans are using these operatives, using these goobas, and pulling them in and sticking them in this highest positions that they can and say, now finish the destruction. Finish the destruction, you fucking criminal. Because you'll probably go to jail anyway, so let's go ahead and use you. Thank you for the million dollars to Elizabeth Dole's campaign back in 2002. Go fuck yourself. That's what's going on. Both sides right now are just using one another to try to ram this motherfucking orange beast through, across the finish line, so that they can get out of whatever their own cons and scams. <laughs> That's what's happening. Sorry. That's what and this yeah, is. And, and oh, it is. It's a sorry, that my was dog. Okay. Ah. That, that was amazing. It's that was amazing. it's across agencies too. I mean, you know, the Correct. Republicans have been trying to privatize every government agency under the sun since the, you know since the seventies, and we're we're going to see it here soon with the VA. I think they're moving oh. uh, this secretary of the VA out, and we'll see who they move in. Maybe, you know, I mean, I'm sure it'll be Some another more. guy who. It's- yeah, he yeah. talks just like DeJoy. And uh, because I, when he was testifying at Congress, yeah. I was like, this sounds like a hitman. He sounds he like a hitman. It. He's a and, no-neck guy. And Trump has put the dingo in charge of the baby. And he does this throughout yeah. every single agency. And let's be clear what's going on here. We're talking about the future of democracy. It's not just uh, your average, uh, you know, little scheme that they're doing. They are actually talking about, you know, destroying American democracy. Because at the end of all of this, they succeed. Um, you know, will be a very hard up, right. be possible for us to have another free and fair election. I got to show you some of the stuff that uh, a private uh, uh, private analyst uh, firm did an analysis on these guys. And as I'm just trying to find the is this the, the spruce stuff? Yes, yeah, the spruce stuff. Really yeah. Interesting. Ooh, ooh, so I mean, this is based on our forensic investigation. We believe XPO is executing an identical playbook to URI, uh, which is the previous company that was uh, Jacobs ran resulting in financial irregularities that conveniently cover the growing financial strain and inability to complete additional acquisitions, yada, yada. And then it says, given um, its un- unbearable and dubious financials, $4.7 billion in debt, uh, that burden, and inability to generate sustaining free cash flow and dependency on external capital and asset sales, we have a worst case scenario, terminal price target of zero. Meaning- It's this a is it's, it's a scam. scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Yeah, it's, a scam. It's, ju- it's junk bond stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's they're just driving people. up the stock price, and and they basically don't have a business model. This is their uh, flyer over here. I don't know if you can see on the. Uh, they have a truck there and on their license plate. It says Ponzi. Um, so they're they're not even being subtle about this at all. They're like it's a Ponzi scheme, people. Um, it's like and- uh, Liv Parnas is naming this shit now. Fraud right? guarantee. Basically, Fraud guarantee. <laughs> It's oh, I can't like, with these fuckers. So this is serious. This is not like these guys are just arriving on the scene and just being a little no. bit, a bit dirty. They have been dirty for a long time. The whole thing is a That's giant right. scam, and they really are hoping to bring it down. There's a um, you mentioned uh, Brad Jacobs, who's the uh, oh, CEO. Yeah. I mean, look at this guy. So Did smart. he just take standing lessons? <laughs> he's leaning on a he's leaning on a desk on a boardroom on a boardroom table, looking <laughs> very Donald Trump. And I think, and so he ran these two companies before Red Time. United Rentals and Terex, both of which were perpetuated frauds. Basically, the same analyst company says he associates with felons. Um, they, this yeah. particular company is, has similar accounting practices to those previous companies. And then there's the seven hundred million dollar uh, Ponzi scheme that one of the directors Spears. Uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable what's going on there. It's like a, it's a giant, giant scam. Um, yeah. And we have a problem because we can't let this guy, Louis DeJoy, uh, be in, in anywhere near the post office. Never mind, we should not let anyone from XPO be attached to the post office during the elections because they've got drivers driving mail back and forth, sorting out ballots. They could do anything they wanted to with those ballots as they're running through. They, they alarms, are. They're, but... dump, they're dumping mail behind... There's video of yeah. you know them dumping mail behind they out of a budget rental truck. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. So I, is- it's like the Lucchese crime family has taken over the fucking USPS. I can't even tell you guys how mobbed up this shit is. It, it's mobbed. so it's the trucking company dumping shit out the back in a in the dark of night into some garage. I, I, it's 
um, it's just a horror show. It's a horror show now. It is. It's a horror and show. Veterans, I'm beginning to think. I'm so pissed about that. I'm so pissed that our veterans aren't getting their meds. Why isn't everybody just pissed about this? I, I, I want to like, ooh, makes me angry. How is that going? I know it's a bit of a side, but let's maybe stop here and talk to Alison because uh, yeah. you're a veteran um, and you want to get to the whole story of how you've uh, you know, transitioned your life now. But I'm really interested in how the post office is affecting the, the medicines getting to veterans. Well, I have a lot of friends who work uh, at the warehouses that distribute the medicines through the mail. If, you, if you're a veteran, you get your prescriptions through the mail. You don't generally get a prescription written for you and go fill it at a, at a pharmacy. Uh, that's how they distribute them. And there is a delay. Uh, they are having, uh, they are getting a backlog of the warehouse. They send out 40, 50,000 medications a day from just one of these um, and warehouses. And they, he, he's like, we have this, we have a really big backlog. I wasn't able to get my medications. I still haven't gotten it. It's been over a month. So um, I so just gave up. So over a month, up. you haven't been able to get your medication? Mm -hmm. What happens if it's like an emergency? What happens if, you know, they don't fucking care. They're the mob. Uh, the one thing that you could do uh, is you could have your doctor write you a prescription and you could like hand write you a prescription. You can go and pick it up from the VA hospital in the middle of a pandemic and then go to a pharmacy and have it filled and pay for it yourself out of your own pocket. Uh, but I, a lot of veterans aren't going to do that, especially ones who m might have mental health issues that prevent them from going out of the house or, or being in contact with anybody at the VA. So Top of uh, everything he said last week in the, 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 the Atlantic article is being just horrific. What he, the, the amount of torment he's putting the military under. It just seems like it's almost it's very intentional. It doesn't feel too well, now, he, to we, now we know he views us as less than or we're suckers or losers because he can't understand a non-transactional giving of the self and expecting nothing in return. He doesn't, yeah. doesn't compute uh, in his fucking brain. So he, he thinks we're all just giant pieces of shit uh idiot suckers losers and I uh wonder and if it's anything to do so with the fact it's that so he's so painful. in favor of russia like is there something there that he's got you know he's, does he actually have you american soldiers is that as in particular is he is he view american soldiers as the enemy because of his um you know affinity for putin no i think it was his upbringing if you've read mary trump's yeah. book he just he doesn't understand uh non-transactional leadership or servant leadership and I mean, you know, he he threatened to disinherit Tiffany if she joined the military. He he said Donnie better not join the John Donnie Jr. better not join the military. Um, uh, so I think it comes from uh, his childhood. Although I will say this recent thing that he said, where uh, you know, the 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 soldiers love me. It's the leadership at the Pentagon that I have a problem with, and that to me seems like that's coming that's from the Kremlin radical. because that is driving a wedge between military leadership generals top brass pentagon and the boots on the ground it's literally trying to to disrupt the chain of command uh it, like he's trying to divide the country or successfully dividing the country uh, i think that that uh, that can't be his a bounty on the heads idea. of some of our soldiers in in afghanistan there's a uh, you know, it just feels like there's, there's more than just this Trump thing that's going on yeah. um, with the military. There just seems a determined effort to demoralize the military, to do everything. Well, he had like 15 calls with Putin in, in from March through May. I'm sure what, I'm sure it's, it's on the on those uh, unless they were just not, uh, you know, they stopped taking notes on him or put him in that system, that code word classified system. system that nobody can see. It's 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 really uh, it's, it's almost like he's an agent of a foreign power yeah. that's uh, trying oh, to destroy us from within a little bit. Almost like that. Almost like that. Um, Almost like. And I know, you know, Allison, I know you've got some big interviews coming up, but um, on, on your show, which is, which I'm so excited about. Um, but the, you know, there was a, a Molly and, and Rick did an incredible pod with Peter Strzok. Uh, they dropped this morning and he went through the litany of it and he was like, no, I don't think it. And then as he went through the litany of the, of the, of the things Zev, that you were just listing out, um, he came back around and goes, you know what? Maybe I, I dismissed that a little too quickly uh, that he doesn't know what he's doing, that Donald is somehow, that this is somehow out of the realm. I mean, if you go to Ivana and you go to Soviet era, Donald Trump going to Moscow and, and her upbringing and her father's there. Yeah. They, they have long been, uh, laser focused on our military and our intelligence communities and did trying to 
put narrative out there that deteriorates, at, posi positions us as the bad guys, the evil occupying forces, as you know, our chain of command as being war profiteers and you know mongers. And this is this has been very important to our enemy for a long time to push that narrative. And I find it very, it flows out of Donald. He doesn't even have to think about it. It's in his bones. Mm -hmm. I think he got yeah. that from his body. Yeah. Well, you know, I ha I'm reading Strzok's book right now, Compromised. Uh, he's a fucking spy, dot com. Um, and, <laughs> you know, he, it's just so subtle how he, uh, he puts these things. Uh, every, uh, every, well, uh, Trump's pronouncements about Russia had become almost a bad counterintelligence joke. Instead of accepting the U.S. intelligence community judgments that Russia was engaged in active measures to undercut our election, he sowed doubt with a false narrative that perhaps an, an, an obese mystery man had hacked Democratic Party networks. <laughs> Instead of a, I, his 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 humor is a little cutting here. Um, instead of acknowledging that Trump had business interests in Russia and that his fixers had been in the country's capital trying to negotiate a deal for Trump Tower Moscow, he denied having any ties to Russia. Every call to, to Russia to hack Clinton's email, every speech praising WikiLeaks for releasing materials stolen by the Russians, every question about the U.S. commitment to the NATO alliance, every false moral equivalence between the U.S. and Russia, they all lined up with Russian strategic interests and followed a script that the Kremlin would have been hard pressed to write more effectively. Like you'd almost have to like be the Kremlin to make the Kremlin like it any better. <laughs> what does he mean? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so after a while you start to go, gosh, you know, I mean, I know it's crazy. Cause he, uh, this is, I'm not even through the introduction here. He's like, well, we know that Trump had financial ties due to his business failings back to 1987. So, yes. gosh, I don't know. Is there a Russia connection with Trump? I mean, we're just not sure. Did, so maybe he that. knows what he's talking about when he kicks. He's trying to destroy our rule of law, our army, our intelligence, our public health. Our It's almost like... He was installed to destroy us. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. And he's, and, Thank and you. He can't run away from that judgment because people just think he's he's ineffective or dumb or stupid. It's, it's not dumb. It's not that. In exactly yeah. the way the Kremlin would love every fucking time. Yeah. It's and after all, okay, the first hundred times that he mirrors Putin exactly, you know, maybe a coincidence. We had Andy uh, Andy Laufer, and we were talking about, well, what are the chances that Roger Stone, who wasn't really in the campaign, in a six-week period, would call Steve Bannon 67 times, Rick Gates 63 times? And Andy Laufer just goes, well, they could just all be really good friends and be sharing They're makeup. They're super tape. hot dudes. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh! yeah, that's the other reason, the only other plausible reason. Yeah. It's, it's, it they is shocking. Ready to swing. They actually do swing together, some of these. Stone, no. yeah. No. I mean, he looks... Dude, LB, Roger Stone is the old creepy dude that would hang out at the goth club <laughs> and like try to get you to come home with him and his five wives, you know, uh, yeah. wearing the steampunk oh. shit. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. We fought those guys off. With, you yeah, know. He's got the tattoo and everything. The there was no stuff. You just girls. made us think about Steve Bannon. Yeah, that was LB. That was, oh. that was not okay. Uh, well, you don't have to think. I mean, on the positive side, it'd be hard to get all of his polo shirts off. So <laughs> it's a whole reveal. It's a whole strategy. Uh, it's a smell under there that's getting covered up. <laughs> Um, let's get back to um, XPO, and then we'll do the rest in, in a bit. I'm really interested in uh, this chart here. So this is what we're looking at here. This is the same company, the same analyst, did this whole ride up and down of XPO shares, and shows exactly where. Um, the company was able to to make money and, and and bail. They fired executives at certain times. Yep. Run up the stock price and then run away with as much money as possible as it collapses around you. And Correct. <laughs> Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative and check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to subscribe and download.